Hello. So I'd like to finish the discussion that we started in class today about making our own map data structure. So I first want to define the abstract data type that I am editing. So we say abstract data type or ADT. What this is, this is an API for what I want to be able to do with this data structure. So like I did in the hash map in Java, I want to be able to put a new key value pair. So given a key and its associated value, add them to this collection. Um, I also want to be able to look up a value for a particular key. And we call that get in Java. So I want to put method, I want to get method. I also want to remove method. So if I specify a key, I want you to remove the key, both the key and the value associated to that key. And then I want a contains key method. So to see if the key is even in the data structure at all. So I'm going to implement these three methods and I'll have you do this one in an exercise. But just notice that, that right now I've left it completely open. So I have a template here. I'm saying the key can be of any type and the value can be of any type and you'll specify them when you declare an instance of this thing. But I haven't said anything about how this is actually going to work. I've just agreed on an API for somebody who's going to come use this. So that's called an abstract data type. Now my implementation of the data type, how I actually make this work and fulfill my contract, that's left up to me. So I'm going to start off implementing this using something like a linked list. And then tomorrow we'll explore how to do this much more efficiently. But a linked list will get us started. Okay, so here's an example of some kind of map that you might want to use. So where the key is a string and the value is an int. And these really are completely unordered, but let me actually put an order on them for my own bookkeeping and my implementation of this map. So and I'll, so I'll turn them into a linked list, a singly linked list that has a head and all that. Okay. So that's up to me. You know, I, I can fulfill this contract any way I want. I can even use an array but I'm gonna use a linked list for now. Um, and the order only matters to me. That's something that's internal to this implementation. The person who uses this doesn't care that Chris is at the beginning. They just wanna know, is Chris there at all? But it'll be helpful for us and we'll look through, we'll have to walk through and see, is Chris actually there, et cetera, okay. So since I've decided I'm going to implement this using a linked list, I call it a linked map. And I've set up a node class. And the node class is a lot like the node class in your linked list before. It just actually it groups together both a key and a value within the node. So it doesn't just have the value now, it also has the key. And but we still have this next pointer. Okay, so the constructor takes both the key and a value, sets them, initially sets that arrow to point to nothing. Um, and then I have getters and setters for all three of these member variables here. Okay, so that, that's what a node is going to look like. Just exactly the same as, as the nodes for your linked list from before, but there are two pieces of information now. Okay, so what I'll do is I'll set up a head. So I'll say node, and I'm going to use the same types for my node as, as are in the template here. So I'll say node which has a key of type K, value of type V, and that's gonna be a pointer to the head. Okay, so the head starts off null, and that's all we need to do in the constructor for now. Okay, so now put is going to be pretty simple. This is just gonna be, in our implementation, we can think of it like an add first. So the order doesn't matter, but, but so it's easiest for us to add something at the beginning, so we might as well just do it there. So we'll just add a new key value pair at the beginning. So I'll make a new node with these types. And I'll pass along the key and the value to the constructor. I'll say if the head is null, then I know that this list is empty, I might as well make the head the new node. 
Otherwise, something's already there. Let me remember what the head was. So called old head. And I'll say, okay, so the head, um, I'll say the new node set next current head. Oh, I guess I don't need this. I can just say new node set next current head and then head equals new node. Okay, just like it was in uh, the module last night. So before I change the reference to the head, I wanna make sure that the new node points to what used to be the head. Now I can set the head to be the new node if something's already there, okay. So that puts something. Let's just see how I'm doing here. Let me, let me try to compile this. Okay, I forgot, I have to say new node KB. Okay, now I'm good. Let me check something. I don't remember if the syntax works in C++. Can I just do that? No, I can't. Okay, so that was a shortcut in Java only. Here, when I go to do the constructor, I actually have to say um, the template types. Okay. Um, I guess that makes sense because because it's, it's dynamically allocating memory. It needs to know what kind of memory it's dynamically allocating, and then we happen to save that memory into a pointer of this type. Okay. All right, wait, so, so that's how we put something. So we're adding something to the list. Um, now let's see if we can figure out the get method. So, you know, I don't know what order that I added things in. So if the key is there, it could be anywhere. So I have to start at the beginning and look through to find it. So if I was looking for James, I would start at the head, which is Chris. I say, is it there? Nope. Go to the next one. Is it there? Nope. Go to the next one. Finally, I would see it was James and I would return the value there. So let's try to write that in code. So I'll start off at the beginning. So I'll make a pointer called node, which starts off as the head. I'll say, well, node is not the null pointer. And node.getKey is not the key that I'm looking for. Then I'll say node equals node get next. Okay, so keep going until you get to the end of the list or until you found the key. So if I break out of this loop and the node is not off the end of the list, then I actually did find the key. So I could say ret equals node get value. Cool. So again, let me just, as I'm going along writing code, I'm gonna make sure it compiles. Okay, good. Um, all right, so, so that, should, that should get something corresponding to a key. Um, I'll tackle remove in a second. Let me not do that for now. Um, just one last thing. Let me make sure I clean up the dynamic memory that I've allocated. So what I'll do is I'll make a destructor here and I will delete everything. Delete all nodes that have been allocated. So what I'll do is I'll say, well, head is not null. So while we still have stuff in the list, because what I'll do, here's where I need the old head. So I'll say node kv old head equals head. So I do need to store a reference for a moment, because what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say head equals head get next. So I'll move it along, and now I need to remember, okay, so what was the old head before I moved it? Because I need to delete it. So that's like saying, okay, I wanna delete this thing at the beginning, so I'm going to move the head to be head.next. So that's gonna do this. And then I need to, so, that, so that's like that. In Java, it would automatically delete this because there's no longer a reference to it, but we have to delete it ourselves. Okay, so that's what we're doing here. And we keep doing that until we find that we've reached the end and we know we've cleaned everything up. Okay, let's check this compiles. Um, whoops, I called it linked list by accident. I meant to call it linked map. Okay, there we go. So let's just test this out real quick. Um, 
What I'll do to make this simple, I'm not going to use character arrays, I'm actually going to use string. So I'll import or include the string library, which means I have to use the standard namespace. Um, so what I'll do is I'll make a linked map whose key is a string and whose value is an int. And I will try to do the same thing that I did here. So I won't necessarily add them in this order, but okay, so I'll put in James, Celia, and Chris. So I'll say l.put James 24, l.put Chris 31, l.put Celia 30. So again, let's just make sure this compiles. Let's make sure it runs. Okay, good. So in class, I was doing something like this. I got an infinite loop because I wasn't actually deleting things in the destructor. So it just had this infinite while loop. Okay, so it seems like we're good. Let's just check to see, um, since I'm using strings, I'll use C out as well. So I have to include I of stream. Um, let's just check to, to make sure that, so I'll say C out um, L dot get Chris. So this should output 31 because I'm getting what was at the Chris location. Uh, of course, I need to say get, I'm sorry, get the string Chris. There we go. Because it's a type string. Okay, nice. It works. <laughs> so it's able to, to find Chris. Let's see what happens when I ask for something that's not there. What if I ask for Mary? That's my mom's name. Okay, so, so it's interestingly, it says one here. Um, I don't think there's any guarantees for what that will actually be. Um, let me see if, it, if it's something different when I run it again. Yeah, let me see what happens if I ask for, I don't know, bear for sinus bears. Is it still going to be one? Okay. Yeah, so, so interestingly, it's like we declare something of this type, and if we don't fill it in, then it's going to be something arbitrary. So we should be a little more careful about that. We should probably print something if it's not found. Um, so I'll just say um, C out warning um, key not found. So let's let's see if that works. Okay, so it says bear not found. So so there's a warning there. Um, so anyway, you can sort of just almost copy and paste this code to implement the contains key method. But let's just make this, a, so you'll have to do that. You'll have to implement the contains key. But let's make this a fully functioning thing for now. And even without the contains key, it's almost fully functioning. Let's implement the remove method. So this method is a little bit tricky in a singly linked list. What we have to do is keep track of the node that came before. Um, so I'll call this last node. And I won't get into the details of this since you've already done this. I'll just finish the code, you can study it. But we did this in class a few weeks ago when we were going over the regular linked list. So, so I will spare you for now, but you should look at the implementation details and um, then implement the contains key method, all right? So go ahead and have at that.